Hello, everyone from Common Ground. Welcome back. We're here at Scrawl Books in Reston Town Center, and they have been wonderful to us. <laughs> they have let us bring our rising stars here. They have been working with us, and they have set us up with some great local authors. Um, this author that we're reading this time is Tracy Kyle. She's amazing. I just love the illustrations and just the idea of these books. So gather around and get ready because we're going to start tonight with Food Fight Fiesta. I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss LJ's here with me. Hi, everybody. Off to the hills of España we go. Grab a tomato and throw. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's everywhere. It's just everywhere. The world's largest food fight is starting right here in the town of Bueno, where we come once a year. Bueno. Bueno, yeah. I put on my goggles. I got mine on. And look for the truck that hauls the tomatoes. Caramba, it's stuck. We climb up the wheels and fall in a heap of squishy tomatoes and sink in knee deep. Tomato, tomato, we hear the crowd sing. Look at that tomato, he's so happy. He's so silly. He's so silly. We're ready to squash the tomatoes and fling the truck, I'm sorry, and fling the trucks the truck moves in closer. Here we go. Grab a tomato. Get ready. Now throw. I know a couple of kids who would love this book just for that throw. And throw. <laughs> Whoosh. Tomatoes are flying in the air. Look at all those tomatoes. That's crazy. Splat. Tomatoes are stuck in my hair. They ooze in my ears and they drip off my nose. They run down my ankles and squish in my toes. Oh my word, that's so messy. <laughs> I love it. Tomatoes are soaring and flying all spaces, soaking our arms and our legs and our faces. I slip and I slide in a river of red as a storm of tomatoes rains down over my head. The crowd is soon covered in bright crimson juice. Caramba! Tomatoes are still on the loose. We're covered in mush and the ground is like slush. How many more do you think we can crush? That's going to make a lot of chili. Mm -hmm. Boom! Ooh. There's a single, there's a, the signal to finish the fun. The cannon has fired. The festival's done. It's time to stop throwing. Let's all settle down. The firemen show up to tidy the town. We head to the river to rise off, rinse off the mess, the pulp and the goo, a sure sign of success. The town of Bonol settles down for the night, already dreaming of next year's food fight Tomato, tomato, I chant in my sleep, cuddling a tomato I managed to keep. That was that one. I like that one. That one that was, was fun. really fun. I like that a lot. <laughs> that one was really, really fun. Our next one, I think I like the words more than anything. The the boom, the onomatopoeia. Yeah, and, no, she's she's really good about that. Yeah. Like getting the kids involved. Oh, Pepe and the parade. A celebration of Hispanic heritage. Yay. Again, by Tracy Kyle. Pepe wakes up early. There's a festival today. 
He's going to the city with his family. Ole! Amigos and familia will attend the celebration honoring Hispanic people all across the nation. Pepe cannot wait to see his friends and eat palapas and hear the mariachis play guitars and trumpets. Mm. Also known as guitarras and trompetas. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy makes a special breakfast filled with love and care. The smell of chilaquiles, chilaquiles and frijoles warms the air. Abuelo, ab, abuelo talks of heritage, traditions, and países. países, and says it is a festival to showcase their Races. Races. Yay! Learning Spanish. Love it. Today is special, Pepe, for the history and pride of millions of Hispanics who are living by our side. Pepe makes some little flags and wants to color more, but Mommy interrupts him. Let's get ready, por favor. Pepe loves his jersey made of radiant colors. Mommy is enchanting in her flada lined with flowers. Abuelo has a thing for hats and wears a white sombrero. Poppy looks so dashing. Mommy cries, mi carambo. Mi caballero. There you go. Sorry, guys. The city pounds with energy and Pepe feels the pride. Remembering Abuelo's words, Hispanics by our side. Pepe spots some friends from school who are Hispanic too. Ana is from Ecuador and Lelo's from Peru. We know people from Peru. They yes. work with us. Miss Delia and Marita. And Marita. Dylan is Dominican. Andreas is Panamino. Uh, Panameño. Yeah. Carla is Colombian. Tomas is Hondureño. There we go. Thank you, Ms. LJ, you're wonderful. <laughs> Juan is Nicaraguan. Teresita es Chilena. Uh, Teresita es Chilena. Sarah is both Puerto Rican and Salvadorian. Max is Guatemalan. Santiago es Cubano. Pepe wants to join his friends and thinks soy Mexicano. Abuelo waves him over. It's our turn to walk now. Vamos. Vamos? Vamos. Vamos. Pepe hugs his poppy, says, Todos celebramos. Thank you. <laughs> Abuelo shakes maracas. People love the chaka chaka sound. Pepe holds his little flags and waves them all around. Mambo, salsa, rock. Bachata. Bachata, cambia, reggaeton. Pepe hears the mariachi start a canción. The rhythm of the Latin music floats on down the street. Pepe and his friends are dancing, bouncing to the beat. Pepe gets his friends to taste carnitas and gorditas with creamy guacamole and a side of papas fritas. Abuela takes a picture. Pepe jumps into the pile of laughing, happy, noisy kids. Abuelo chuckles, smile. That night, when Pepe heads to bed, he feels very proud. He knows the day was special. He could sense it in the crowd. He falls asleep so grateful for the fun he had today and knows that next year's festival is just 12 months away. It's not that far. I like that one. That one was cute too. I like celebrating heritages and cultures and I like when it's um when there's it's multi generational. Yeah. Yeah, I like when, when grandparents are heavily involved. Oh yeah. Yeah. It just it helps to carry on the idea and the ancestry of it all, which mm -hmm. is great. Our next book is A Paintbrush for Paco. Oh, this one's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And we got a little, little card in here. Aww. 
And Tracy was so nice to sign She's, all of these. Yeah. They're all signed and available at Scrawl Books. This one says, be creative, Tracy Kyle. Oh, I love that. It kind of goes hand in hand with the, the book. Right? <laughs> Paco gazed out at the late morning sun. He wondered why recess had not yet begun. He wanted to go to El Campo and play and act like a matador shouting, Ole! At someone. He thought about football and scoring a goal. He wanted to run in the sun. Paso! He longed for his lunch with manzanas and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> He yearned for a nap underneath the big trees. That was the one word I picked up from Duolingo. Lanzana. Paco, he heard. It was El Profesor. Let's follow the lesson, he said. Por favor. Paco blushed, turning a light shade of red. He sank in his chair and lowered his head. Oof. Oh, Paco, we've all been there. Oh, yeah. But one hour later, he could not sit still. He daydreamed and looked out the window until, I wonder what happened. He lifted his La Pisa and started to draw the life in his pueblo, the world that he saw. Look at his world. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. There's so much detail. There's so much going on. He colored montanas, 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 and stretched to the sky with pajaros, pajaros swooping down low, flying high. He doodled his picture and made a retrato, retrato, with mommy and poppy and Pancho, his gato, his cat. <laughs> <laughs> Peso. Paco. Paco. Caramba. Caramba. Professor cried. He leaned on the desk and his eyes opened wide. Paco, he whispered, you must come with me. There's a salon de classe. Salon de classe. Yeah. I need to see. Forget the easy word. Later they walked down the hall to a room with easels and brushes and colors. To bloom. Look at all those colors. Pink rosado, purple morado, a fiery orange. A, naharan, a, a, a naranjado. There we go. Yeah. Verde the green in a vine of ripe grapes. Rojo the red in the matador's capes. Look at all those pretty pictures. There's chickens. I love chickens. That's, that's the best one. <laughs> Azul, the blue in the beautiful sky. Blanco, the white in the clouds floating by. Amarillo, Am Amarillo? Amarillo. Yeah. The rays of the sun shining bright. Negro, the black in the El Campo at night. I'm loving his artistic creativity. I know. Next, Paco picked out a brush on pincel. He chose a few paints and he mixed them up well. I wonder what color he created. He painted and painted, and when he was through, his heart burst in green, yellow, orange, and blue. Oh my goodness, good job. That's so beautiful. Professor Clapton said, que talentoso? Que talentoso. Your artwork is brilliant and marveloso. Paco was grateful and felt so contento. He knew this was such an important momento. Paco looked up at his proud professor who said, you're a painter. Tu eres pintor. Later that night, Paco crawled into bed, a palette of colors swirling in his head. Negro, guablanco, azul, y, y rosada, rosado, rojo y verde, y anaranjado. I can't say that one. Anaranjado. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. His artwork went to bed with him. He fell asleep holding the brush to his heart and dreamed of the new world he'd found 
full of art. Oh, that was great. I love that one. Yeah, that one's perfect. And there's a glossary in the back to help with vocabulary, which so, is great. So one of the things I love about these um, books is it makes it's really good for immersion from younger kids, mm -hmm. um, and it really makes it uh, you know learning another language not only accessible but not in, in any way intimidating. You right. just kind of blend it in with the story you're already listening to, and I love that about her. That's great. I'm gonna pick up a few of these for Lily just to give her a little yeah. soft immersion. And then our final book, Alpaca Patty's Fancy Fleece. It's so cute. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fluffy. Miss Shannon knows a lot about alpacas, which makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, back when I owned chickens. High up in the Andes on a mountain in Peru, Patty the alpaca guised up her debut. Mommy fluffed her downy fur and tied a beaded bow. Find your Kriya friends at school. There now, off you go. All the young alpacas met for class behind a, beside a lake, and when they spotted Patty, they did a double take. Patty, her amigos hummed, your fleece is soft and sleek. And that's the moment Patty the alpaca felt unique. We're all unique in our own special way. Every morning, Patty chose ornaments for her fur, dazzling her alpaca friends and causing quite a stir. Velvet bows, headbands lined with flowers, Patty's morning prep became a drama taking hours. At the lake, she loved to sneak a peek at her reflection, cherishing her fine peel and noting its perfection. Look at her. She's just, <laughs> I'm so pretty. Sprinting down the mountain road, she came upon the city desperate not to go back home and lose what made her pretty. Patty shuffled through the streets, flustered and fatigued, and then she saw a market. Patty stopped. She was intrigued. El Morado overflowed with heaps of handmade goods. Flowy ponchos, cozy... Guantes. Guantes. Sweateres. Yeah, suteras with hoods, soft buffanadas, knitted socks, rows of zapatillas, heavy blankets, perfect for the mountains, N noches, frias, frias. multicolored bolos, bolsos, uh, multicolored bolsos, next to the grossos, goros, goros, and abrigos, abrigos waiting to be purchased by a group of new amigos. Patty touched the merchandise, studying each piece. Every single one was made with pure alpaca fleece. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> fleece that had been spun, then dyed, then woven, cut, and sewn. Fleece that all the villagers were proud to buy and own. Suddenly she understood the Pueblo needed wool. The people loved alpaca fur. Patty's heart was full, Aww. so she's happy. She's, she can help them stay nice and warm. In the spring when mountain farmers came to do the shearing, Patty led the herd and was the first one volunteering. Good job, Patty. Mommy beamed with pride and smiled. Here's your beaded bow. Wear it as a necklace since the fur takes time to grow. Oh, look at her. Oh my God, that's so cute. Oh, my heart, it's so full. Lily would do that. She would. Take my fur. Spring turned into summer on the mountain in Peru. By autumn, Patty's fleece had sprouted silky soft and new. Fall turned into winter, and one night there was a storm, but Patty knew the people in the Pueblo would be warm. 
They were warm because she gave fur. Snuggling with mommy, Patty settled in her bed, but not without her velvet beaded bow right upon her head. Oh my goodness, that was cute. That was cute. That was super cute. I just want to take a second and say how much I love these books because of the small amount of Spanish immersion, which is great. And it helps with early literacy. So every night that you read to your kids, they're learning. They're learning new words. They're learning new ways to express themselves. So I highly encourage you all to read to your kids every night. And I just want to say thank you for joining us at Scrawl Books in Reston Town Center. It was wonderful being here. And I can't wait to do it again. I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you, Scrawl Books. Thank you, Tracy Kyle. We'll see you next week.